Governing Nelson graduating class of 2021. My name is Mrs. Grinton, and today we're going to step through things like graduation requirements, uh, timelines, important dates that are coming up. Uh, so we'll start with this first screen. By now, you should have received your credit counseling summary. Uh, it looks something like this, um, and we're just gonna. I'm gonna just do a quick orientation of this form with you, so you can see the type of information on it and uh, verify that it's correct. So the first thing you should look at, of course, is the top here. You should see your name and your student number and your OEN number up here, and those should be correct for you. Uh, over here is your community involvement hours, and uh, that should be uh, 40 or more. <clears throat> That's a graduation requirement. Uh, the next thing we have is the literacy requirement, which should say successfully completed in English. If it's not, uh, you need to let us know if you don't already have a plan in place to make sure that you, uh, you satisfy that literacy requirement. Okay, down here under credit totals, you can see this area here is a summary. The top row indicates what's required for your Ontario diploma, and the bottom indicates what you've actually earned. So what is required is 18 compulsory credits and 12 elective credits. And what this student has earned is 14 compulsories and two electives. Okay, and you need a total of 30 credits. And let's take a look over here. These are how the 30 credits are. These are the requirements for the compulsory. So four English, one French, three math, etc. And you can see here that this student has earned two English and two math. So they're missing two English, they're missing one math. And as we scan over there, the other thing they're missing is this group one. Okay, so you can see what's what is missing on yours um, and then you have to start asking yourself okay do i have a plan for what's missing so let's focus on this group one for a second here group one um, requires you to take an additional english on top of the four that you would take so perhaps writer's craft or a language or a social science and humanities or Canadian and World Studies, or Guidance and Career Ed, or Co-op. So what you want to do now is you want to go up to uh, Section 8 here. These are the current courses that you're taking. And you just want to say, OK, are any of the things I'm taking, do they satisfy what it is I'm missing? So for Group 1, one of the things that we said would satisfy it is Canadian and World Studies. And this CHW course, which is History, um, would satisfy the group one. So once this student has completed this course, they will have their group one requirement. Um, you can see that there are two English missing and one math. And you can see here this student is taking grade 11 English and grade 11 math. So then the only thing left here will be the grade 12 English for them. So you just want to go through here and make sure that you've got all your compulsories and enough electives to get you to the 30. Okay, and then the last two sections here, this is section nine, these shows all of the courses that you've taken in the past. So for example, over here, we can see the student has um, ENG 1D1 and 2D1. This is academic English. Here's the mark the student earned. They got a credit for the course. And these were the dates that these courses were taken. And then finally, section 10 shows what diploma you'll be earning. It's the OSSD from 1999, that's the Ontario Secondary School Diploma. 1999 is the last time that they updated the diploma requirements. So it's the most recent one. Okay, moving on. Okay, if, if you have changed anything, um, any of your important information, um, from the time you started high school to now, I, you just need to make sure that you've let us know. Um, things like Canadian citizenship status is very important. 
Um, and when we say it makes a big difference financially, it's the difference between applying as an international student versus applying as a Canadian citizen. So if there's any important information that we're not aware of, please make sure that it gets updated at, uh, in the office um, so that we have the most recent uh, information. Okay, currently 58% of our grads have completed their hours. Uh, that means that the rest of you, the other uh, 42% have not, um, and without those hours, you can't graduate. This year, the ministry has not waived this requirement, so you have between now and June to complete them, but ideally, we wouldn't want you waiting all the way until June in case there's any kind of a problem. Um, so you want to start looking for opportunities. You want to make sure that they meet the board requirements for opportunities. Uh, I can't emphasize enough that uh, you cannot volunteer at any kind of a business, whether it's a family business or otherwise. <clears throat> Even if they're not paying you, those hours do not count. It needs to be a not-for-profit organization. So ideally, uh, something like uh, Habitat for Humanity, uh, perhaps the Humane Society, uh, the Heart and Stroke Foundation, these are all examples of not-for-profit organizations. Um, it, the idea is to give back to the community. Uh, if you have hours that are outstanding that we haven't yet received from you, um, then we need to get you to get those forms into us as soon as possible. So scan them and send them to Mrs. Everett. She's our guidance secretary and her email address is shown here. Note the two T's. Um, so please send uh, your uh, any hours that you have so she can update your records. Okay, when you start out planning for post-secondary, um, there's so much to, uh, to think about and it can be overwhelming. Um, but, you know, keep in mind, this is an exciting part of uh, your life. It's not supposed to be overwhelming and scary. It's exciting. Um, you know, a lot, there's so many possibilities out there. Um, you know, some kids think about taking a year off. Some kids think that they'll work for a year maybe and save some money. Um, there's so much information that they, that students feel they need to know, like when are applications due? How do I make the right choices? What are the admission requirements? Um, some students are looking at applying outside of Ontario. Um, you know, where do you find all of this information? Don't let it overwhelm you. Um, we're starting early so that you know all of this information in a timely way. Okay, so what's going to happen um, in the next couple of months is around mid-November, we would normally have an assembly with you to show you how to complete your applications. We'll do another video instead, um, and we'll step you through the process. So we'll, for both university applications and college applications, um, we'll, we'll do a, pre a presentation uh, similar to this and show you what you need to do. Now, the big difference between university and college is this idea of a PIN number. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll go over how to use that. Uh, the deadline for applications to university is January 15th. So again, you've got lots of time. And the deadline for college is February 1st. Those deadlines are what are referred to as uh, first consideration. So you can apply after those dates. It just means that everyone that met the de deadline will have their application considered first. Okay, so a PIN number. When you apply to university, you need a PIN to create your account on OUAC or OUAC or that you'll hear it pronounced a few different ways. So OUAC is the Ontario University Application Center. Um, you, once you've created your account, you no longer need your PIN, but you need it to get started. They will be mailed directly to your home via snail, snail mail, so you need to keep your eye on the mailbox. Um, and we're expecting that they'll probably be mailed out end of October, early November. 
um, it's a new process this year to mail directly to the students. In the past, we would hand them out. So we're assuming it's going to be similar timing. As soon as you get your PIN code, take a picture of the letter that you receive with all the information. That way, if you've got a picture, you can't, you don't have to worry about losing the PIN. And then once we have our presentation on how to apply, we'll talk about how to use that PIN to get started um, and creating your in creating your application. For college, you don't need a PIN. They don't use uh, that process. Um, the website for college applications is OCAS. Uh, they use a, um, a different process. So you, there's no PIN required for that. Okay, so up until this point in your, high, your school career, you've used my blueprint .ca to do a lot of your research. And it's a great website. There's lots of tools associated with it. But now that you're in grade 12, there are two websites that we want you to start using for your research. The first is called Ontario University in Universities Info.ca, and the second is Ontario Colleges.ca. Um, I'm just going to see, uh, I'm going to show you very quickly how to use both to get started. And I've included a description here. You go to programs, enter a keyword, and um, see what's out there. And it's going to show you things like admission requirements and cutoff marks. So I'm going to just do a quick uh, orientation of both to get you started um, so that you can start your research. Okay, we'll start our orientation with Ontario Universities Info.ca. Um, so this is the home page for that uh, website. And if we click on programs um, and we go down here and put in a keyword, you can see what I've been looking up recently. Um, so nursing's on the top, so I'll start with that. So when I click on nursing and I say search all programs, it will find all programs related to nursing um, in Ontario. Um, and so kinesiology, for example, is not nursing, but there may be a nursing component to it. So you can see there's all different um, descriptions, if you will. So if nursing is somewhere in the description of that program, then it will pop up here. Now, I do have, there's a lot you can see, um, and some programs are even bigger when you put in the word, depending on what it is. So you can also look at advanced search options, and you can limit what universities you want to search by. Um, so there's lots of ways of approaching this. All right, so uh, I'm going to scroll down and find nursing at McMaster, nursing one. Okay, when I click on that, um, it brings up the program information for nur nursing at McMaster. So just very quickly, you can see four tabs here. Overview gives you an overview of the program. Uh, so the Bachelor of Science in, in Nursing, or BS, BSCN, is the degree that would be granted. This is the OUAC code when you're applying. You can see the cutoff marks, 85% plus to be considered. So that's their cutoff. And these cutoffs are determined each year. So, you know, the previous year, it might have been higher or lower. It's really just, they have, you can see here, they have 128, 120 spots to fill. And uh, so last year when they filled those 120 spots, the cutoff was 85%. There is a uh, experiential learning associated with it in the form of a clinical placement. They might also identify co-op depending on the program. Um, so this is where you would find that kind of information. Uh, and then they talk a little bit here. Not every program has these notes, but here they talk about their joint programs with Mohawk and Conestoga. So if you're really passionate about um, going into nursing, you could apply to Conestoga, Mohawk, and McMaster. Either way, you're going to end up at McMaster earning this degree. There's links to the McMaster website. There's links to McMaster Nursing there. Um, so that's the front page. The if you click on pre requirements, it's going to show you the courses that you need. So you can see for nursing here, you have to have that for you English. You have to have one grade 12 math and then bio and chem. 
So of the top six that they're going to look at, this program is stating four of the six they're going to look at. So uh, when I talked about, um, or I will talk about um, how they determine those top six, it's going to be based on the requirements. Okay. Um, and then uh, they can they talk a little bit about their policies around if you repeat courses when when decisions are made etc if they issue alternate offers um, so this is a good place to start your research so you want to look for your programs um, look for the universities that you're interested in um, and make sure that you have the necessary requirements Okay, so now let's start our orientation of OntarioColleges.ca. This is the home page for Ontario Colleges. Um, and it, you can see here, big button here, apply now. This is where you would also create your college application. Um, so I'm going to go up here to programs and click on programs. And you can see that there is an opportunity here if you want to explore by category. So this would allow you to um, to just see everything that under agriculture, for example, um, or I can put in a specific keyword. So I'm going to put in nursing again. Um, and you can see that I get 133 results here. So I'm going to filter it by college. Um, so I'll click on Mohawk. And um, you can see that there are five programs that pop up. Um, and one of them is the Bachelor of Science in Nursing, the BSCN, which is the same program that's offered at McMaster University. Now there's a little, if we scroll down here to the bottom, you can see that highly competitive thing. And you can see that if I want it to just show me the highly competitive programs, um, all five of them are considered highly competitive. So that's something to be aware of. Okay, when I click on the website, it'll take me directly to the Mohawk College uh, website for that program. And there's lots of information here. You can see the overview, tuition, etc. And I'm going to click on admission. Okay, so it talks about it being a limited enrollment program. Uh, there's only so many spaces, as we've seen. And you, you would click on applicants directly from Ontario Secondary. So here are the requirements. Your diploma with 4U English, one of the maths, bio and chem, and then two additional grade 12, 4U or 4M. And then on top of that, they make a note here in terms of averages that are required. Um, <clears throat> so this would be the same as um, the same requirements as what was required for McMaster. Okay, now if I go back to programs here and I clear all of these filters and start again, and let's say I'm going to put in computers, um, then you can see that uh, it's updated with um, a whole bunch of different programs here. So um, again, I'll let's say this time I'll look at Fanshawe, and there's the computer programming and analysis. If I click on the website here, It will take me to the website specifically for this program at Fanshawe. I want to look at admission requirements. And you can see here, high school diploma with any grade 12 English, college or university, any grade 11 or grade 12 math. And then these are for other people. These are for mature students. So an English and a math are what's required here. OK, so you want to do some exploring and see what program what programs interest you. Again, if you're not sure about the programs, starting from the um, category exploration section is a nice way to find out what sorts of things are out there. Um, another great option after high school is to start an apprenticeship. So if you're thinking about doing an apprenticeship where uh, you're entering a trade uh, after high school, this is a great website to get started uh, looking for. Uh, information on how to do that. Um, there's also a website uh, that's referenced here called Job Bank that allows you to find an apprenticeship oppor opportunity. You want to look for uh, 
someone who's willing to take you on as an as an apprentice. So it will help you to link up with a the, a master uh, craftsperson um, so that you can start earning those Red Seal hours. Um, and the great thing about an apprenticeship is that you can earn money while you learn. A lot of apprenticeships have you work with a master for a while, then attend some school for a while, then back to work again, school, work. So it's back and forth with some exams um, to um, at various levels are achieved. Um, and of course, the great thing about it is because you're earning money, you're not accumulating any debt. So um, apprenticeships are a wonderful opportunity. Um, click on these links and check them out. Okay, college admission requirements. In order to apply to college, you have to have um, your Ontario Secondary School Diploma, and you have to have uh, your grade 12 English at the university or college level. Um, and then depending on the program you're applying to, there could be certain marks that are required. There could be specific courses that are required. They may require you to submit um, an essay or um, provide additional uh, references or resumes of what you've done. Some programs have aptitude tests. Um, they may also want to know about volunteer experience. So it really depends on the program. Um, so you, you want to research all of the requirements and make sure that you satisfy all of them when you're applying. Um, I've what I've done here is I've provided links to every one of the uh, the colleges in Ontario. Um, their their virtual tours. So this is the website for doing research. But each of these will take you directly to the um, the college uh, that you're interested in and give you a virtual tour tour. There's also a, a really nice guide down here uh, that I've included as a link as well uh, with some additional virtual tour information. So check out uh, these links and see what the campus looks like, see where they're located, um, what they have to offer. Um, you really want to make sure when you're choosing somewhere that it's going to, to fit with your needs. There's also uh, this year uh, a virtual Ontario College Fair. The university and college fairs happen every year. For some reason, um, the Ontario uh, universities are not doing a virtual fair, but the Ontario College Fair is being held virtually, and it's on November 4th and 5th. This is the link for it. Um, and this talks a little bit about the things that you'll learn. Uh, it's worthwhile attending if you can. I believe these sessions, one of them is in the evening. Um, it would be worth having your parents attend with you so that they can find out things like uh, the cost of, of college, what the housing situation is like, what their what unique programs they have. Um, colleges have changed significantly um, in the the last uh, decade. Uh, the variety of programs they offer is um, amazing, and uh, there really is something for everyone. Um, if you're going to live away, you want to make sure that there is residence. Um, there are residence facilities there and how you go about uh, getting a residence spot. Um, when you're looking at the programs offered, you want to pay attention to this idea of, is it a highly competitive program? So one example is nursing at Mo Mohawk. Nursing is highly competitive. So that means that they have way more people applying to the program uh, than spaces available. Uh, so that means that your marks are going to become very, very important. Okay, and then another uh, thing to pay attention to is, do I need to prepare a portfolio? And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a second. Okay, myths. College is an easier alternative to university. Um, it's it's not, this is, this is not true. Um, College is an, an easier alternative. It's a different alternative. It's a different experience. Um, college tends to be more hands-on. Many programs have co-ops or internships associated with them. Um, there's some incredible programs out there. So don't, don't get uh, 
caught up in that trap. Uh, colleges for kids who can't get into university. In fact, many university, it says here, approximately one third of college students have previously gone to university or college. So often uh, kids will graduate from university and go on to a college program um, because many college programs are connected to um, business. And so there are uh, there are a lot of opportunities linked through co-op, et cetera. Um, and in fact, this was my daughter's experience. She graduated uh, from university and then did a one-year program at college. Um, and from that college program, she got an amazing job. Um, I won't be able to continue my post-secondary education in university if I start out in college. In fact, many of the colleges are linked with uh, with a neighboring university. Again, I'll use the example of Mohawk. Mohawk and McMaster have um, some re uh, relationship where some of their programs, the students start at Mohawk and finish at McMaster. Nursing is a great example. Students start at Mohawk, finish at McMaster. They earn both a diploma and a degree. Um, there are alternatives to community college out there. There are private career colleges um, that will uh, often get you direct entry into a particular occupation. Uh, they're usually more expensive, but they're shorter. Um, one that I can think of off, just off the top of my head is, my, is uh, a hairstyling college where you're trained specifically on that to prepare you to work in that field. But there are many. Um, I haven't bothered to list them here. Uh, just know that they are available and again, they're, they are more expensive. Um, many, pro, many colleges offer uh, degrees. Um, some are applied degrees, some are collaborative degrees, such as the nursing one I just spoke about. When you're looking at a college program, if the word bachelor is in the description of the program, then it's going to be a good degree granting program. But also what you need to know is it's going to have the same requirements as um, a program you would be applying to at university. So it will still need those six grade 12 U courses or UC courses. Um, uh, there's so many examples out there. Uh, you know, when you are doing your research, uh, just take a look. And again, as I said, if the word bachelor is in there, it's a degree granting program at college. Um, if you're going to be applying to the U.S., there is a, um, a scheduled U.S. college expo on Wednesday, October 21st at Oakville Trafalgar High School. Um, they hold this expo every year. Um, Again, based on COVID restrictions, uh, we don't know yet whether that will happen, but they often have a number of um, U.S. colleges visiting. Um, and so uh, I would say mark your calendar, but also pay attention to the Oakville Trafalgar High School website to see if that is actually going to happen. All right. Now, this, this slide has special effects, and it's, there's, it's for a reason. Okay, when you're applying to university, you must have the following. You have to have a high school diploma, and I'll speak to that in a little bit more in, uh, in greater detail later. You must have grade 12 university English, and you must have six grade 12 U or M courses. And some programs will limit the number of M courses you can have. Now, the reason that we're flashing these things is because despite telling kids this, they forget or they, they don't hear or whatever. So I want you to take a look at your credit counseling summary. Make sure that you are scheduled for For You English and then count the number of courses that have For You or 4M in them and make sure you have at least six. You might even have more, which would be better. Um, depending on your program, they're going to look at your top six and you don't have a choice as to what they look at. They will decide what the top six are. And it's usually the, the six highest marks, unless the program requires some specific courses. So English is, is always one of them. Now here's a mistake that a lot of kids make. Check your codes, PAF 4.0 this O here, that means that that will not count towards your top six. So if you have five U or M courses, and then this is your six, you don't have enough to apply to university. So we want you to pay very close attention to you, the courses you're taking um, and the courses you've taken. 
and make sure you have six. Now, if you took a grade 12 course in your grade 11 year, but it has a 4U or 4M code, that can also be used toward your top six. All right, admission requirements may also include a supplementary application. These are becoming more and more the norm. So when you apply, I can definitely say that Waterloo Engineering requires a supplementary application form. Um, and it takes a lot of work. There's usually essays, et cetera, that are required. So you, you need to pay attention when you apply to whether or not these are required and make sure you allow yourself enough time to be able to complete the supplementary application form. Um, there's portfolio highlighted again. We'll talk about that more in a, a minute. Um, you may also be required to have an essay. Um, some schools may make an offer of admission in February based on grade 11 marks. And we have so many kids come to us and, oh, early off, early admission, early acceptance. I need this. It has to happen. And it's such a fallacy. So we always tell students to think about it this way. Universities and colleges are businesses, right? They're in the, they, they, money changes hand. They're, they're businesses. They have seats to fill. And so by extending early offers of admission, they are trying to fill seats. Um, and if you accept an early offer of admission, then you, uh, as soon as you accept an offer, no other universities will make an offer to you. So what they're trying to do is, is you know, get you um, signed on early so they can secure their income. Um, and it's, it's such a, a I don't know, it's such a trap because then you don't know what other offers you're going to get. So I always say to kids, if this if this early offer is from the program of your choice, then by all means accept it. If it's not, then just wait until you've heard from all of the other schools. All right. Now, according to U of T, because um, we've had questions about this as well, how are grade 11 marks used? So according to U of T, in our assessment, we consider all grade 11 finals and grade 12 finals and midterms with an emphasis on courses relevant to the target program. So again, if you were applying to engineering, they look at calculus, for example, that's a grade 12 course. If students present a course at both the grade 11 and the grade 12 levels, emphasis is placed on the mark achieved at the grade 12 level. So again, calculus versus grade 11 math, they're gonna look at calculus. Moving forward, we'll be, we will be prioritizing consistency in students' academic records. The senior English grade will be included in the applicant's calculated average. So grade 12 English counts, they're looking for like, students that have not, you know, slept for three years and then decided to pull out all the stops in grade 12. But I mean, that that's very rare nowadays. Kids don't really think that that's a thing anymore. So what the universities have told us is that if your grade 11 marks help you, we'll use them. And if not, we won't. That's basically how they summed it up for us. All right, in terms of finding university information, the Ontario Universities Info.ca is the place to do your research, and I've included all the virtual tours of the universities in Ontario here, as well as the link to the guide down below. So check it out. You want to make sure that this is a place you can, you know, that suits your needs and you see yourself there. If you're applying out of province, this link here will give you virtual tours of campuses outside. Uh, of Ontario, but in Canada. Um, but if you're applying out of province, you can't use the OUAC to apply. Um, although they will, there are certain universities that will take your, um, your academic information from OUAC. So it's the, you have to apply directly through their uh, website but for some universities, the data collection will come from OUAC. It is a bit confusing, but uh, not every university does. Um, so you, you will have to pay attention to their admission requirements and they will indicate, you know, if you're out of province, here's the equivalent that we're looking for. Um, you should also be aware that tuition fees are often higher if you're applying out of province. Um, because tuition fees are typically subsidized at the provincial level. So if you're a, uh, 
if you're, for example, wanting to go to McGill and you're not a Quebec resident, then you would be paying a higher tuition fee. So I've given you a couple of examples here, but you really need to do your research. Um, you want to pay attention to things like cutoffs and admission requirements, any additional admission uh, criteria. If you're going to be living away, how soon do you have to apply for residence? Typically, they, they want that indicated in your application. Um, there's lots of scholarship information available for entrance scholarships and other scholarships. So you want to do research for that as well. And then there's that portfolio requirement thing again. Uh, so why have I highlighted portfolio throughout this? Um, if you're applying to uh, anything uh, artistic in any way, there's typically a portfolio required. It could be um, a paper portfolio. It could be a video portfolio. Uh, but there's typically some kind of a portfolio required. And it takes a long time to create a good portfolio. So you want to be starting that right away. Um, and you also want to pay attention to what the portfolio requirements are. Um, they can be very specific. And I've given you three links to three different um, places. OCAD, which is the Ontario College of Art and Design, Sheridan College, Waterloo Architecture. These are three very different um, organizations um, that all have portfolio requirements when applying. And I've given you links just so you can look at what those requirements might be. But uh, if there's any kind of portfolio needed, you want to start that immediately. Um, okay, some myths here. Early acceptance is the most important. And if I don't get it, I'm not getting in. I've already spoken to that. Uh, once I receive an acceptance letter from my school of choice, I can coast. They do pay attention to your final marks and they can rescind offers. Um, and we have seen that happen once or twice. Uh, once I receive an acceptance letter from my school of choice, I don't have to attend school anymore. The reason this myth is on this list is because we have had students tell us that. Um, and that's that goes back to my earlier slide where the very first requirement of applying to either college or university is that you have a diploma. So even though you get an acceptance in April or May, uh, you have to go to the end of June and, and complete your diploma. So please don't stop attending. The program decision I am making is final. That's it's not true either. We see a, a really um, a lot of kids um, after they've gone to their first year of university switching out of a program they started in to something that they find more interesting. So don't ever feel like you're making a final decision and your whole life is riding on it. Um, you know, my experience. Uh, I started out in journalism and I'm a teacher now. So. Um, and I had a few other destinations in between. So nothing is ever final. Uh, once I receive an acceptance letter from my school of choice, it doesn't matter if I fill it, finish my volunteer hours. You can't uh, earn your diploma without your volunteer hours being finished. So that is definitely not true. Uh, and the only cost to attend university is tuition. Um, that is definitely uh, not true either. Um, my kids have recently graduated, I can say that on average, uh, with living away, uh, the cost of attending university is about $20,000 a year. So residence fees are a big part of it. Uh, you know, if you're living away, food costs, books, uh, tuition, all of these things factor into it. Um, you want to make the right choice. So you want to do lots and lots of research. Um, if you have a specific career in mind, then you want to look at what's the best training to get there. What would be, you know, it's not about I want to attend this place because, you know, it's, um, you know, a, a, a reputable place and I can brag about it. It's more about um, I want to I want to be a nurse. Where's the best place to go to be a nurse? Or I want to be an engineer. Where's the best place to go to be an engineer? Uh, you want to look at prerequisite courses, minimum marks, total cost, what feels good for you, and then ask questions. You know, phone the universities, uh, attend any virtual um, open houses that you can, ask questions. If you would like to meet with us to discuss any of this, Mr. Ball meets with students from A to G, Mrs. Hall meets with students H to N, and I meet to students O to Z. These are our email addresses here. Uh, we can only have appointments with you on your face-to-face -face day whenever you're in the building, but we can also do virtual meetings. So if you want to do that, just 
uh, when you email us, just indicate that that's your preference. Um, and of course, if you're going to meet with us, you must have done a self-assessment um, for COVID on the day of your appointment. And if you have any symptoms at all, please don't come to school. These are links here. You can uh, do the self-assessment here and you can review the symptoms to make sure that everything is okay. All right, so now that you've gone through all of this um, and uh, we're you think that you're ready to graduate, we'd like you to click on this form and just complete this exit pass for us. Um, you'll need your um, credit counseling summary with you when you do it. Uh, please take the time to do it. It's important information for us. Thanks, and we'll, we'll talk again soon um, to go over uh, how to apply.